Continuing with topic three, paper 12, we've been looking at the capital asset pricing model. And we can see in paragraph 3.2, the formula, the expected return of an investment is the risk-free rate plus the market premium, which dependent on the stock, it's the beta of that stock multiplied by the market premium, uh, the return of the market minus the risk-free return. Now, the capital asset pricing model is reflected in the security market line, the SML. Uh, and we can see uh, an example of the security market line on page 3.16. Now, it shows the risk-free rate uh, on the y-axis on the left, the market portfolio and the continuation of the security market line as a function of beta, which is on the x-axis. Now, if you are holding uh, the market portfolio, then the beta of the market portfolio is one. And if you are a diversified investor and you've diversified away unsystematic risk that we will refer to in a moment, uh, then when you are looking at adding uh, investment, uh, you focus on its beta. If the beta is less than one, then the expected return will be less than the market portfolio. If the uh, beta is greater than one, you will expect a return for that investment that is greater than the market return. Now, I referred to unsystematic risk. Total risk of investment is made up of systematic risk, which is market dependent, plus unsystematic risk, market independent. A shortcut to this is unsystematic risk is unique risks of particular companies, whereas systematic risk is the risk of the market as a whole. Uh, at the bottom there, we say that the capital asset price model assumes full portfolio diversification so that you have zero unsystematic risk, assumes that the market will pay a risk premium for bearing that systematic risk. Let's look at a little bit more detail. The key differences between systematic and unsystematic risk. Going down the systematic risk column, uh, it's also known as market risk. Uh, the risk events are fluctuations in the total market. So if the market goes up 10% and you have a fully diversified portfolio, you would expect uh, the market portfolio to go up 10%. Uh, examples, general economic conditions, impact of monetary fiscal policy, anything that affects the whole market. Uh, is it diversifiable? No, you cannot diversify away the market risk, the systematic risk, and we measure it through beta. The unsystematic risk, also known as non-market risk specific to an industry or a firm, uh, examples would be strikes, product development, competition affecting a particular company's project or activity, and it is diversifiable. That is because you take investments together that are not perfectly correlated and you reduce the standard deviation of the portfolio. Uh, measurement of unsystematic, it's not measured. Again, we assume zero under the capital asset price model. So please remember, if uh, you're asked a question about assumptions underlying the capital asset pricing model. The main one is that you're a fully diversified investor. And we can see uh, the function of diversification in the following graph towards the bottom of page 3.17. Uh, portfolio standard deviation, y-axis, number of securities held in a portfolio. And as we increase the number of securities held in a portfolio, we are diversifying away unsystematic risk because we're looking for uncorrelated returns. Uh, the systematic risk, the risk of the market, uh, does not disappear at all. It remains. And so you can see the more portfolios, I beg your pardon, the more securities you bring into the portfolio, the closer you get to uh, eliminating unsystematic risk, uh, leaving you with systematic risk in your portfolio. Now, the bottom of page 3.17, we have a note, systemic risk. Systemic risk is the risk that the financial systems in a market uh, break down. Uh, and an example would, would be uh, Black Monday 1987, 2008 with Lehman Brothers. Continuing top of uh, page 3.18, capital asset pricing model focuses on measuring systematic risk, as I've said, by measuring beta. So, 
Capital asset price model, some assumptions. Investors require a return greater than the risk-free rate as compensation for taking on that risk. Investors do not require a premium for unsystematic risk because it can be diversified away. And investors require a higher return from securities that have a greater systematic risk, greater uh, beta than the market average. So what about beta itself? I've, I've made references to it. Let's just get into some detail. It's a measure of securities systematic risk. The greater market portfolio has a beta, uh, I beg your pardon, given that the market portfolio has a beta of one, we can then go on to deduce that a security with a beta of 0.5, half as risky as the market. So the market goes up 10%, uh, the security would only go up 5%, half. Security with the beta of two, twice as risky as the market, and a security with the beta of zero is risk-free. There is no risk-free. That would be the risk-free asset. Now, what affects the level of beta? Nature of company's activities. Riskier the activity, the higher the beta. That is, uh, the riskier the company is relative to the market. Level of leverage. More highly geared companies have a higher beta. And cyclical nature of companies' earnings, if you're looking at uh, a company that goes through an earnings cycle, that will be more sensitive to those earnings uh, and the beta will be higher. Now, how do we calculate the beta? Linear regression. We take, and it's reflected in this graph, we take series of returns of the security and we regress them against the return of the market. And the slope of that characteristic line is the securities beta. Will you get examined? Yes, they can ask you about the characteristic line. They can ask you how you calculate securities beta, and it's linear regression, regressing an individual securities returns against the return of the market. And the slope of that line is a measure of beta. Now, what are applications of the capital asset pricing model? Uh, First of all, portfolio construction and rebalancing. Uh, So a portfolio with high betas, if you you have such a portfolio, uh, would be attractive to an aggressive investor. So uh, an aggressive investor wants returns greater than the market. So you'd be looking for high beta stocks. Portfolio with low betas, suitable for conservative, just the opposite way around. And a portfolio will need to be rebalanced when the beta moves away from the intended portfolio beta. So you'd be measuring the the betas and uh, monitoring them. Let's look at an example of portfolio beta rebalancing. Portfolio is constructed with two shares. $1 $1 million worth of company A, the beta of 0.5, 1 million of company B, with a beta of 1. What should be done to rebalance the portfolio if company A shares price doubles and company B share price trebles and the share betas remain constant? Okay, let's look at the original portfolio beta. 1 million multiplied by 0.5 plus 1 million multiplied by 1 divided by 1 million plus 1 million, the two uh, total value. So we get 1.5 million. This is weighted by betas. That gives us a portfolio beta of 0.75. The new portfolio beta, well, the price is doubled. So it's 2 million multiplied by 0.5. That's what you want. And uh, the second one is trebled 3 million multiplied by the beta of 1 divided by the total value of the portfolio gives us a a portfolio beta of 0.8. We need a portfolio beta of 0.75. So to bring it from 0.8 down to 0.75, company B stock will need to be sold because it's the more expensive. Company A stock will need to be purchased. Uh, That could be the subject of a question. So just be aware of the mechanics.